right now we're going to follow up uh, with our previous Spider-Man videos and we're going to conclude kind of the last remain storyline. So this storyline was something we've talked about in previous episodes and I'll try to put a link to them down below so you can check them out. And uh, and I might make a separate playlist because as we do more Peter Parker stuff, it might be fun to have like a Spider-Man playlist on here somewhere, uh, but I'm not gonna do that anytime soon. We gotta get a few more stories out there before we can make a solid playlist. Uh, so if you're watching this years later, maybe there's a playlist that you can check out too so you can see all this in order. Um, but I'll try to put a link at least to the previous two videos down below so you can catch up if you haven't seen them because we've been covering some of the Nick Spencer Spider-Man stuff ever since the Sin Eater came back. And the only reason I did was because Sin Eater kind of in a way ties into Eddie Brock. And so I was curious where the story would go. So we've been talking about it here. And unfortunately, it doesn't go where I wanted it to go, <laughs> but uh, but it still did deliver us a pretty interesting Peter Parker story. So we're going to continue that tape with uh, Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man, I should say, number 53. Um, and that is uh, part, I don't know, four or something of that of this Last Remain storyline. It's a six-part story, but there's also the, you know, uh, Amazing Spider-Man 53, 53.LR, 54, 54.LR, and 55. And those are the five comics we're going to go over in today's episode. So as I said, it's uh, written by Nick Spencer. Uh, so a lot of these issues are drawn by Mark Bagley, I believe. And if there's a different issue where he doesn't draw it, I'll mention that. Uh, but we'll have the title card pop up there just so you guys can see it. And in this issue, we have kind of where we left off in the last one. We as the audience know that Harry Osborn is kindred now. Spoiler alert. <laughs> uh, we figured that out. Um, but, uh, but Peter Parker has not really discovered that yet. So this is the issue where Peter Parker, uh, Peter Parker finally learns that uh, that his friend Harry is this creature that has been tormenting him now for a while, uh, pretty much ever since Nick Spencer started writing the book, which was in issue one, and now we're in issue 53. So plus there's been a lot of point HU issues and LR issues and a lot of things between. So we're like 70 something issues in and uh, and we, we are finally getting to the Kindred stuff. And at first I was really upset how long it was being dragged out because it reminded me a lot of Tom King's like very terrible Batman run, in my opinion, very terrible. But this, I felt like the, the revelation of who it was, was great because it was someone that a lot of people first suspected but then doubt was thrown in along the way, and then people went back to thinking it was Harry, then more doubt, and then, uh, so I kind of like that. And I, there's even a line in one of these books where Peter says, uh, you know, Harry, aren't you tired of being the first person that people guess whenever some threat shows up, some goblin-type threat shows up? And uh, and yeah, I kind of I kind of like that Peter's throwing that in a meta way at uh, at Harry there. But the book starts off at this one, and it has like Harry overlooking his family. They're sleeping at night, you know, Liz and his son Normie. And he's kind of like, you know what, uh, you know, he's like, she's sitting there pontificating, thinking about them, I guess, and his life. Uh, but something has gone wrong, definitely, with Harry. Uh, this is not the Harry we know, even though it's, you know, it is, but it isn't, I feel. And there's a twist in here we're going to talk about, and I'll theorize when we get there. But uh, when, as Harry's looking over his family, Peter Parker, who's been technically killed in the last issue, uh, he's in some kind of nightmare dream sequence where he's back at this party uh way back from the early days of amazing spider-man and he's seeing like flash thompson and he's seeing you know harry coming back uh from his trip to europe and stuff and you know all the uh, it's like a different time of their friendship way back in the beginning i think when they were like leaving high school going into college or something and uh and it was it was pretty awesome to go back and see mark bagley kind of reinterpret that party but in a dream sequence where characters are showing up that wouldn't have been there um like carly cooper and things like that and uh, and uh, lily hollister i think her name was um so there's a couple characters that are showing up and you're like they're not supposed to be there but really the point of that dream is that peter's trying to get to mary jane and she's always out of reach and that's kind of the whole point of this and what's going on here and possibly the the connection that this story has to the one more day storyline which is pretty if you haven't read it i would check it out it's not everyone's favorite spider-man story for sure um but uh, it is something that it looks like nick spencer's trying to go back to and explain a little bit more about like how you know look what's the what's the ramifications i guess of peter parker's deal that him and mary jane made with mephisto um and in return like they got Peter Parker in Civil War in the comic book, he unmasked himself and revealed that he's Peter Parker. And that ended up essentially getting Aunt May killed because someone hired a sniper to kill Peter Parker. His spider sense warned him. He pushed Mary Jane out of the way, but the bullet came through the, the hotel window and, and killed Aunt May. 
So Peter, of course, felt responsible. And having been responsible for both his uncle and his aunt, he couldn't take it anymore. So he agreed to make a deal with Mephisto with Mary Jane's consent that they would undo their marriage because I guess a love of theirs that's that strong is like a gift from God, Mephisto says. And he wants to take as many gifts from God away from Earth as possible. And so he's like, so if you give me your love and you separate, then I will give you your life back. Your Everyone will forget you were Peter Parker. Unless you re-reveal yourself to them, they're going to forget that you were ever Peter Parker. And, uh, and you can go back to having your life, but you can't have Mary Jane in it. And the unborn child, the child you were going to have, you're not going to have it anymore. And of course, fans were pissed because like me, I'm like, if Aunt May found out that Peter Parker made a deal with the devil to save her life in exchange for a future that Peter Parker was going to have a Mary Jane, Aunt May would kick the crap out of Peter Parker and probably disown him uh, because that is not the boy she raised. But that's Peter. He His guilt is stronger than his superpower sometimes. And uh, and so I, I, I appreciate what that story tried to do, but I just hated how it was executed. But it looks like Nick Spencer's trying to touch on that because one of the things that happened in that was uh, Harry Osborn was dead in the comics before that story happened. After Peter made that deal, they erased Mary Jane and Peter ever getting married, which in, in essence caused a, a minor ripple effect that brought Harry Osborn back from the dead. So Harry never died. And that is what we think Kindred is. But that's why we think he's so determined to get Peter Parker to confess. He's like, confess to what you did, man. Like, you, you've admit it admit what you've done but peter literally doesn't have that memory anymore uh, mephisto has taken it from him so peter doesn't know he made a deal to undo something so it's hard for peter to, con to confess so that's what i think is neat that nick spencer's doing and he's just like i'm just gonna lay this on thick like uh, you know i'm gonna i'm gonna really put peter through the ringer and that's what he does like once harry reveals himself uh, you know, he then spends the whole next issue beating Peter Parker to death and bringing him back to life again, which we'll get to in a second, because first, after he reveals himself, hey, it's me, it really is Harry, and Peter's shocked by that, we cut to 53.LR, which is uh, by Nick Spencer and Matthew Rosenberg, who co-write it together, and the title screen is up there, and then you got Federico and Takeshi doing the artwork, so that, that title screen is up there, hopefully you see it, and, uh, and then we cut to Moreland, and so while all that's going on with Peter, and he's getting the revelations and everything and seeing what's happening with Harry and, and trying to figure out what's going on. We have Moreland being tracked by the Sin Eater. And uh, the Sin Eater, it lays a trap for Moreland. Moreland's eating, uh, you know, mutated uh, spider people and getting powers back. And then, you know, we have Sin Eater shows up, throws a grenade at him, trying to stop him. And Moreland laughs. He's like, really? You thought you were going to kill me with a grenade? And he's like, not really. And so as Moreland tackles him, uh, you see uh, uh, Sidney to reach over and grab this string and he pulls it and behind Moreland on the ceiling was his magical shotgun and he actually shoots Moreland right in the back which essentially kills Moreland or doesn't kill him it takes away his sins right and and feeds that power to uh, the Sin Eater. Uh, so now he has the power of Moreland, who single-handedly took down a bunch of Spider-Man all across the multiverse. So that's a lot more power on the Sin Eater already, and it's just he's just getting more and more powerful. And uh, and like a, and you know that some of those sins left him to go possess other people, but now he's trying to get some power back uh, so he can um, you know uh, continue his his mission. Even though Kindred kind of threw it in his face and said, you, you know, you were just my puppet. He's like, no, there's got to be more to this. And he's like going to, you know, he's on the pursuit of that truth. Uh, and meanwhile, while that's happening, we have Doctor Strange along with the Order, as they call themselves, which is uh, Miles Morales, Spider-Gwen, uh, Spider-Woman, um, Aranya, I, I think, uh, I don't know if she still goes by that. Um, and then we have uh, 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 Madam Web and, uh, and Silk, and they're all together together in a dream sequence. Uh, and what's really cool about that is this dream landscape that they're in, this was actually going also going back to the Skrzynski run. Uh, J. Michael Skrzynski, he was the one who wrote One More Day, the, you know, the Spider-Man story where he made the deal with Mephisto. So this actually goes back to issue 46 or somewhere around there um, of Amazing Spider-Man, uh, the second volume of Amazing Spider-Man, where Doctor Strange shows up in Peter's dream and helps him figure out what's going on. And I think that was back during like the setup for um, you know, Moreland and a bunch of other characters, I think. Uh, but that was all leading up to, you know, Brand New Day and, and One More Day and then Brand New Day. So uh, so I thought that was cool. Like Nick Spencer's really, you know, doing his research here. And probably because he's just a fan of Spider-Man. But 
I kind of like this stuff. Like I like he's using continuity and he's not like retconning things just for the sake of retconning things and anything he's like tweaking, he's trying to like give a reason for it. And I've, I've been enjoying that so far in his run. It's not always hitting it out of the park, but when he does, I really do like it. And I, I enjoy his efforts that he keeps trying to tie this into things and make this make some level of sense. And I'm really digging that. So uh, in this dream world, there's like demon kingpin shows up and demon uh, aunt Mays show up at one point and uh, the heroes have to fight back and then we get a demon mary jane who shows up and dr strange is like all right i'm gonna fight this thing because it's the main demon that's kind of ruining peter's dreamscape i'm gonna teleport you guys out to the real world and you're gonna go save physical peter parker now so uh or spider-man he didn't say peter parker so he sends the order out although i think they know he's peter parker and as they arrive at the graveyard where Kindred is and where he's holding Peter Parker, uh, that's where they, they you know, show up and they're in the graveyard walking towards the building that Peter Parker's in. And that's where the Sin Eater is and he's waiting for them. Um, so he's like, all right, good. Like I wasn't expecting these guys to show up uh, here out of nowhere, but I'm glad they are because now I can shoot them and take their powers um, and maybe get to the truth of all this. So, uh, so that's how that issue ends, and we go back to issue Amazing Spider-Man 54, which is Last Remains Part 5. We've got the title card up there. Again, Mark Bagley on art, Nick Spencer writing it. And this is where we have not the final, final confrontation between uh, Peter and Harry, but definitely a you know, solid one. It's the penultimate chapter of this story, and Peter's facing off against Harry, and Harry's, you know, like, you know, you don't believe me, you don't think it's really me. And, uh, he, and so Peter starts getting mad. He's like, oh, is really? He's like, just... After all this time, I thought you changed. I thought you bettered yourself. You had a family. You have your son. Like, you're actually doing good. You're being a better human being. You helped us during the, you know, absolute carnage stuff. You helped us before that with, um, you know, the Red Goblin stuff. Like, like seriously, man. Or not absolute carnage. I guess he was kindred during absolute carnage. But he's like, but you helped us with Red Goblin and everything. So I thought you actually bettered yourself. But you're still just the whiny little child who's looking for his dad's approval or whatever. So Peter's saying some really harsh things. Actually, Nick Spencer really lets peter loose as far as like his anger getting the best of him which happens to all of us I, I i've always seen peter parker as a very flawed character i mean this guy has done everything from hide dead bodies um you know to actually hitting mary jane while she was pregnant like he he it was an accident kind of like he like turned and like backhanded her um but still like she was pregnant it was a really horrific scene actually especially the way it was drawn and uh and so like to me i'm he's always been that character that screws up a lot like he does he has got a lot of flaws and then maybe that's because uh, writers and artists do that to him you could easily make that argument but uh but if you take those big moments out like those two i just mentioned you can still uh trace back things he says that he regrets later so this is one of those things where he's just letting out all that hate and it's something we all do sometimes and that's what i like is that he does it but yeah, really deep down, he, he doesn't really feel that way. I mean, he does and he doesn't. You know, it's kind of one of those instances where, you know, deep down you're angry and it comes out, but you you know above that deep downness, there's a part that is okay with, you know, telling that anger to let it go. And, and sometimes the anger just wins. And that's what's happening here with Peter. So he lets loose, but Kendra doesn't care. And this is where Kendra just beats him to death, picks up a rock and caves his head in, brings him back to life, slits Peter's throat, brings him back to life, punches him in the heart, brings him back to life like he does all these things and he's just killing peter and resurrecting him back and forth back and forth and every time peter dies uh his he gets the last moment of his life flash before his eyes so he sees the party they were at when they were kids he sees times hanging out with flash thompson times hanging out with gwen stacy mary jane and he's seeing all these big moments um and then one of the last moments he sees actually is gwen stacy uh which goes back and forth because you're like this book is clearly setting up that he loves mary jane and that's like kind of his become his true love but yet he still does you know have these moments where he's thinking about Gwen so uh so now that he's resurrected again like you know Kindred brings him back and he's like stop like stop stop doing this why are you doing this to me he's like because I want you to see he's like I can kill you as many times as I want he goes but the point here isn't to kill you it's to literally let you see what hell is like and he goes and this is what hell is dying over and over and coming back in, in a sense and he goes um that's what hell feels like and he goes, so now you're going through hell. This is what I wanted to put you through. And he's like, look at your life. And there's all these mirrors around. And these are mirrors that sometimes uh, Kindred uses to like travel through and stuff because he's got some kind of magic uh, demonic abilities. So uh, so yeah, he's 
you know, he's got, he's pretty powerful. I thought he was using the spot technology, uh, but the spot actually shows up in this and it's clear it's not his technology, or at least it seems like it's not uh, because it gets used against Kindred later on in this story. So, um, so Peter's sitting there like, so or where do we go from here? Like, you know, you've, you've killed me, you've done this, like what's happened now? And he goes, he goes, oh, he goes, we have, I have another surprise for you because I've been waiting for her to show up. And they look and one of the mirrors shows that Mary Jane is now arriving in the graveyard too, um, along with Peter's friends who are about to get jumped by the Sin Eater. So, uh, so then we cut over to Amazing Spider-Man 54.LR. And again, there's a title card up there. We got Nick Spencer and Matthew again writing, Federico and Takeshi also again on art. But it starts off with some, I think Sal Buscema, I think was the artist on this. This is from one of the Spectacular Spider-Man issues, I believe, leading up to the death of Harry Osborn. And they actually reshow uh, this sequence where Harry kidnaps Mary Jane and does it and brings her to the bridge where Gwen died. But he's like, I'm not here to kill you, Mary Jane. I'm here to save you from Peter Parker. So this is the mentality that this Harry had before he died. He wanted, I mean, granted, at the last second in that issue of Spectacular 200, he saved Peter's life and other people's lives and dies as the Green Goblin, but he did something heroic before he died. Um, so this is showing that mentality though that led to that final battle where he's wanting to protect Mary Jane from Peter because Peter, according to Harry's perspective, ruins everything he touches. You know, Peter's, you know, Harry's like, Peter got his uncle killed. He's got Gwen killed. He, he's going to get you killed. He's going to get me killed. Like, we got to get away from this guy. And me as the goblin, I now have the power to stop him. And that's kind of a unique perspective. I mean, you know, some villains have had similar perspectives before on Peter, but it's kind of a neat perspective, at least to me. So, um, so while that's, you know, while Peter's looking through the mirror and seeing everything going on, like his friend's about to get attacked and Mary Jane showing up, this issue backtracks a few minutes to show how Mary Jane got to the graveyard and she got there because of Norman Osborn. And uh, so, but it was cool to see that Sal Buscema artwork in the beginning to kind of set this up. And then we go into the artwork of, of the two gentlemen that drew this book. And, uh, and it's great. I mean, I love the art on all these books, uh, the tie-ins and the main ones. And so now that Mary Jane is walking through the, the cemetery, we also have uh, Sin Eater, you know, jumping out to attack the, the order, the spider people. And uh, they're about to, he's beating them up. He's actually winning. But then Madam Webb shows up and she says, look, if you want, you don't want them. You want me. I'm the most powerful out of all of them. I'm the, the connector to all of them uh, with the order. She's like, I can see visions and all this stuff. So take me out. And he goes, fine. So he turns his shotgun and he shoots uh, Julia Carpenter and, uh, and shoots her down to the ground. And you're like, holy crap. And everyone's freaked out. You know, she's dead. She's dead. But then he absorbs her powers. And at that moment, he can see everything clearly. He can see what Harry was planning. He can see that Norman has not gone back to being bad. Um, he can see that, um, you know, Kindred and the dinner table with all the dead bodies. And he can see Mary Jane and he sees the whole picture now. And he's like, no, I was lied to. This is all lies. And as he's having this vision, parts of it kind of pulse out of him. And the other order members see glimpses of it, too. So, uh, so not all of it, but they see like little glimmers of what uh, Sin Eater was seeing. And then once he sees what the truth was, he's like, no, this can't be. I'm, I was just a puppet. I was this. I don't have a higher calling. I don't have a higher purpose. This isn't fair. This isn't what I was promised. So he turns the shotgun around, puts it under his chin, and Craven the Hunters himself um, and blows his brains out. Um, and, uh, and then everyone sees the, a big blue beam break apart from him and shoot up in the sky. And I guess all the sins are freed uh, that he has, and they eventually go back to where they belong. All the people who are mutated into spider people, I guess they turn back to normal. Um, and all that part of this is all kind of fully undone now. And so now we just have the Order, who is uh, now free to go stop Kindred, but then Kindred comes out to take them down. And while that's happening, we have Mary Jane getting closer to the building that Peter's in, and uh, she's on headset talking to Norman Osborn, who dropped her off at the cemetery, and uh, because now he's kind of a, a good guy, although we think he's still bad, but in these issues we're going to find out he actually is faking the evil part. Uh, he His sins never came back to his body, and uh, apparently that was a plan that Harry had all along, and we'll get into that probably in the next episode, The next because we're going to talk about that in post-mortem, which is the follow-up to this. Uh, but this issue ends with, uh, you see Norman Osborn talking to Kingpin, and he's like, all right, get your team into place. We had a deal. You're going to help me capture Kindred. 
and uh, you're going to get what you want from him, and I'm going to get something I want from him. And so, uh, so now you're like, okay, the plot thickens. Like, what's going to happen here? Because way back when, uh, Kindred actually showed up to make a deal with uh, with Kingpin, and and Kingpin was like, you know, obviously he wants to bring his wife back, and he tried with the cloning thing, and he tried with all this other stuff, but he wants to bring his wife back, and uh, he's been unsuccessful all these years to do like to actually bring her back. And so it looks like he might have a way to do it, but he needed Kindred, and Kindred told him no. Uh, so, so that's why he's interested to work with Norman to capture Kindred, because he's going to now try to force Kindred, I think, to resurrect his wife. So this is getting good. I really like this. So now we're going to end uh, today's episode with episode uh, uh, issue 55 of Amazing Spider-Man. I don't have the title card up there. Uh, it's Nick Spencer and Patrick Gleason comes back, who was kind of the artist that they were touting was going to be on this book for a long time. And then he pretty much drew like a couple issues here and there. And then I haven't, we haven't seen him. So I don't know if it's scheduling. I don't know if he hasn't been feeling well. Like, I don't know what the issue is, but I love Nick uh, or Patrick Gleason. I love him to death. He's a great artist. I loved his Green Lantern core stuff and I love his art in general. So when he was touted as the Spider-Man artist, I got pumped. Um, and I know it was like Nick Spencer and Patrick Gleason. And I was like, that's a good team. But then we just saw very little of Patrick Gleason. I think he did some of the 2099 stuff and then he kind of disappeared. And I'm like, so it's, it's nice that he's back and he draws the conclusion of this, which has Peter Parker waking up and all the dead bodies are around. And then he also has all of his friends, his living friends around, except Mary Jane. So everyone's been captured. Mary Jane is approaching the building. They're all in there and Kindred's like, we're just waiting for our last guest. I'm waiting for her to get here any second. And then that's when we see Mary Jane walking up. And as she walks into the building and talks to Kindred, Peter Parker's not having it. He's like, no, stay away from her. He breaks free. He goes, he, he literally punches uh, right through into Kindred's mouth and his fist goes into Kindred's head. And then Peter Parker uses his web shooters and it goes through Kindred's head. So he literally like was ready to kill Harry Osborn here, like to save Mary Jane. He punches his brains out the back of his head and shoots webbing through his skull. Like how, wow, intense, right? Um, but that doesn't kill Kindred. His face heals back up. The maggots come up and, and fill the, the space in there. And, uh, and he grabs Peter and just smacks him around and, and makes short work of him. And then Mary Jane's like, stop, <clears throat> you know, stop hitting Peter. Peter, stop hitting Kindred, let's all, this is what you wanted, Kindred, uh, or Harry. And he's like, oh, so you know the truth. He goes, yes, but you wanted us all here together, like old times, at a party, at a dinner party. So here we are. So everyone sit down, stop hurting each other, and let's talk this out. And then as he does, or as everyone starts sitting down, uh, you know, Norman heard all that because she has an earpiece in, uh, Mary Jane does. And he goes, okay, she's in. Let's get ready. So, you know, Norman and Kingpin and everyone are setting up their stuff outside to get the jump on Kindred here, who is completely unaware, apparently, that they're out there because he's gotten everything he wanted. So everything that he wanted is right in front of him, and he's not expecting any twists now because he's the master of, you know, all these machinations. He just didn't think that Mary Jane would actually turn out to be a deceiver, uh, which is pretty cool. So I kind of like that. So he's talking to Mary Jane, saying, you know, at one point I was in love with you, and, you know, then, but I, you were in love with Peter and Peter's like, look, I don't want to hear this. Like, this is so gross. He's like, you're, you're, you're pining over some girl you liked in high school and college. And he goes, move on. He goes, actually the, the Harry I knew did move on. He had a family, he had a wife, he had a kid. Like he moved on from Mary Jane. He's like, this is creepy. And I'm not going to sit around and listen to this. He's like, it's weird. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, good call. Cause it is a little weird. <laughs> it's like, move on already, dude. Um, but they reference Amazing Spider-Man Volume 1, number 40, uh, which was when Spidey saves the day, you know, fighting against the Green Goblin. And that's when he first beat up the Green Goblin. And Green Goblin got amnesia after that. So he forgot that, you know, Peter was Spider-Man for a while. But Harry says, you know, you should have taken my dad in and got him real help. Instead, when you realize he forgot who you were as Spider-Man, you thought, oh, oh, look at that. Everything worked out. So now you just dropped him off at home. And me and my mom had to deal with him struggling with these inner demons of his goblin side trying to remember and his, you know, regular side not, you know, uh, trying to suppress it. And um, he's like, and you, you basically created an even more hellish home life for me, Peter, uh, when you didn't just bring my dad in for help. And uh, I, I was like, hey, that's a good point. But again, Peter's like, you're just deflecting. And he's like, uh, you know, everything from my battle with your dad and, you know, way back in Amazing Spider-Man 97, um, you know, they reference that book too. And he's like, all my battles I've had with your dad, he goes, they were this, that, they were me and your dad. And he goes, and I'm sorry that bled over to you. He goes, I was, I was trying to save your dad and protect him and bring him back to you to be the father 
that you needed um, because you know, I never, I, I, Uncle, I had Uncle Ben and I had a great dad uh, as, you know, surrogate dad and he's gone. And he goes, but your dad was never my surrogate father. He wasn't. He, wa he maybe wanted to be because he saw something in me that he didn't see in you, but I never accepted that. And uh, he goes, I, you know, I think he worked for him for a little time, but that was it. And he's like, yeah, I never, I never warmed up to that idea that your dad looked at me as a son and wanted me to look at him as a dad. He goes, I had a dad. His name was Uncle Ben. And so I kind of like that. But then, you know, Harry doesn't like hearing that. He rages out. Uh, he starts throwing people around, picking them up off the table, tossing them around and stuff. Um, and then he says, you're right. He's like, we've been dancing around the issue here. None of that stuff is really what matters. What matters is what you did to me. He's like, do you know what you did to me? And Peter's like, whatever it is, I'll tell you. Just, just tell me what it is. He's like, I, I, I'm like, look, he's like, I tried to kill you. Like you got Mary Jane. You have all my friends here in captivity. Don't you think if I knew what you wanted, I would just give it to you? He's like, I would absolutely give you whatever you want in exchange for all their lives. So just tell me what it is because I, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what I did to you other than date Mary Jane when you were in love with her when we were younger. And he goes, but you moved on from that. So I'm confused. Like, what did I do? And that's when Mary Jane comes in and goes, he's not going to remember. She's like, I know you want something deep down from him, but whatever it is, Peter doesn't remember. So you need to let us know what is going on. Where, where did you come from? What are you exactly? And then before he can even answer that, Norman shows up, pumpkin bombs the hell out of the place, seemingly pumpkin bombs, uh, or throws a bomb at Mary Jane. It looks like it kills her. Kindred gets mad at this. He's like, no, he's like, she wasn't supposed to die. This isn't part of my plan. I didn't see any of this. So, so Norman did that to like throw Kindred off, but Norman's in the goblin gear. So we're like, oh crap, Norman is bad again, but he's not bad again. He's actually still a good guy. And he planned this out with Mary Jane that he would throw a pumpkin bomb that was just a flash grenade, but it, it would look like an explosion, but it was just a flash grenade. So she's fine. Peter grabs her and she's like, it's okay. You know, tiger, it, it's fine. Uh, I'm, I'm safe. Um, and meanwhile, you know, Goblin starts fighting against uh, Kindred, and then Kindred gets captured because of uh, something happening outside with uh, Kingpin, where he activates a machine uh, that's hooked up to the spot. And the spot uh, uses his powers to trap Kindred into, um, you know, a, a cube. And that's pretty much where the issue ends. So where this goes from here, now that we know Mary Jane, she kind of whispers to Peter at the end, she's like, I'm going to be okay in the last page. And we have all the pieces. We have, you know, Kindred looks like he's being captured now. We have Norman, who has just worked out a deal with Kingpin. Uh, we have all the heroes sitting around, confused as all hell. Doctor Strange is still in that dream world, I guess, fighting that demon Mary Jane. So we don't really know what's going on with him at the moment. But we'll find out definitely in the next episode where we talk more about this. So after this is a story called Postmortem. It's, it's a two-part kind of wrap-up of this, although it still doesn't wrap up everything. So in the next episode, we'll probably talk about the two post-mortem things, and then we'll talk about the two Mr. Negative issues, and then we'll wrap up with issue 60 uh, of Amazing Spider-Man, which is a, a story with him and Mary Jane, and we actually get to find out how much this is probably going to connect to one more day. Uh, so we'll get there when we get there. That'll be probably in the next, I'll record it tonight, but I don't know when I'll post it up or get it edited, but I'll, I'll try to post it up soon. Uh, but for this, like, what did you guys think of this run? Did you enjoy this at all? Are you reading Amazing Spider-Man? I know this isn't Venom, Venom related, but I actually find this story pretty interesting regarding Peter Parker. And it shows a lot that's going on. And there's some things that happen in this, uh, like where uh, I think Black Cat, like she like kidnapped or stole some things from Doctor Strange. And some of these issues that we talked about before, that's gonna play a part coming up in King and Black, uh, cause I just read those issues tonight. So we'll talk about that in probably in the next episode, we'll get some more King and Black issues in. But uh, but I like this, like there's a lot of talking, like a lot of continuity sharing and, and conversations between Nick Spencer and his editor probably and other writers and editors. And I'm kind of digging it. I'm, I'm, I'm liking the effort that's put into this. And even though I don't love every single thing and some of the dialogue at times with Peter, I'm like, and eh, that seems a little too harsh, a little too rough or whatever. But you can imagine at this point in this story, Peter is strung out. He's been through everything because of Kindred. And now he just wants to, you know, he just wants this to end. And you can understand that. I mean, anyone could understand that. But if something goes on this long, this stalker that's after him and stuff, like you're like, all right, it's time to, it's time to stop now. And uh, and this is the point where we're getting to, where hopefully it will. But I imagine now that Norman Osborn and Kingpin have custody of Kindred, 
the story's not over yet, and we're going to get into that very, very soon. So let me know what you think of these issues of Amazing Spider-Man 53, 53.LR, 54, 54.LR, and 55. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below, and we'll continue the conversation, as always, down there. Thanks for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you all in the future. Peace.